So we've been playing around with this thing called filling order. And we've been staying near the shallow end of the pool. And that is more literal than you might think. And let's take a look at our filling diagram and I'll show you what I mean. So each of these represents an orbital. And uh, they are on this increasing energy vertical graph. So anything that is higher up is higher in energy. And so when we are filling, uh, the number of electrons that an element has, say for example, one of the ones we've been using has been sodium. And we know that sodium has 11 electrons. And if you're wondering where I got that from, it comes right from the fact that sodium has an atomic number of 11. So we're going to streamline things a bit and instead of drawing a clunky up arrow and a down arrow like we've been practicing in a couple of these I'm going to just use a slash to indicate one electron and then a slash in the opposite direction to indicate the second so we know that sodium's electron configuration is going to look like this we've got 11 electrons to stash we've just stashed two of them so here's three and four and those fulfill the Aufbau principle because we're filling the lowest orbitals first. And now we have 5, 6, and 7. We're putting them in the 2Ps. And because they're all at the same energy level, it doesn't matter which one we put them in. And Hund's rule says they have to remain separate for as long as possible. Now we're going to add 8, 9, and 10. And there is one more electron to stash, but no more room. So it goes here. And it might have occurred to you that that is why sodium is in the location it's in on the periodic table. And that would be here, which is in the third row and in the first column. It's in the third row because it's filling the third energy level. And it's in the first column because it only has one electron in the of uh, third energy level okay so up to now things have been pretty cut and dried and so we're going to go to an element like potassium and you're going to see that things go slightly off the rails I'll show you what I mean here we go potassium has 19 electrons so we're going to put them in the appropriate orbitals in their appropriate order, starting all the way at the bottom as per the Aufbau principle. One, two. Let's use a different color. That one's not very visible. One, two, three, four. Keeping them separate. According to Hund, that's eight, nine, and ten. Now we have eleven and twelve. And of course, after three S, we go to three P. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And there's one left. And you might be thinking that we're going to go to 3D. But here's the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Aufbau principle says that we fill the lowest available energy orbital first. And if you look at this chart, the next lowest available energy orbital is not 3D. It's 4S. 3D is slightly higher. You see how this is slightly higher? And so the next orbital we fill is not going to be 3D, but 4S. And that means that potassium's electron configuration is 1S2, 2S2, 3, I'm sorry, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. We're not filling the d's yet, and that might explain why potassium is where it is on the periodic table, and that is here. In row 4, it's filling the fourth energy level 
and it has only one electron, and so it's in group one, energy level four. So you might guess that there is some confusion because the order in which orbitals fill isn't necessarily numerically consistent. So I'm going to show you an easy device, an easy trick to remember what the filling order is. This is called the diagonal rule for electron filling order, and you might find that it makes more sense if you make these arrows look like this. And if you follow them, it tells you exactly what order the orbitals fill. And this will explain a lot of why the periodic table looks the way it does. So for example, in the one that we just did, potassium, its filling order or electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. And you'll find that if you follow these diagonal arrows, 1s follows by 2s, which is followed by 2p, which is followed by 3s, which is followed by 3p, and then 4s. And then the next orbital that will fill after 4s will be 3d. This might also explain why the periodic table looks the way it does in terms of how wide its sections are. Let's do one. Okay, here is one. We've got silver. It has 47 electrons. So let's fill them in the proper order, in the proper sequence, and we're going to use this guy, the diagonal rule for electron filling order, as our guide. And remember, it makes a bit more sense if you point these arrows at each other. So let's start off. We've got 47 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now the 2p's are full to the 3s, 11, 12. And from the 3s, we now go to the 3p, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. From the 3p, we now go to the 4s. Uh, this is 19 and 20. From 4s, we go to 3d, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. From 3D to 4P, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. From 4P to 5S, 37, 38. And from 5S to 4D, 37. And that's going to be right here. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. So, a couple of things about this one. This is called Silver's Electron Configuration, and boy, it's a long one. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d. 10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d9. Boy, if only there was a shorter way to write that. Actually, there is. Something called noble gas notation. We see silver right here. What noble gas notation does is it takes the notation of the noble gas closest to our uh, target element without going over. Well, noble gases, in case you haven't figured it out yet, all end in P6, right? Because everything that's in group 17, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they all end P5. 
That means everything that's in group 18 is going to end P6. Krypton is right here. And it is in the fourth row. So it ends 4P6. Everything on top of that is going to be after 4P6. And silver is right here. Krypton is 36 electrons. Silver has 47. 11 more. And of those 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, they go in the 5S2 and the 4D9. So a faster way to tell uh, silver's electron configuration would simply be to say that it has the exact same electron configuration as krypton, a noble gas, plus 11 electrons, two of which are in the 5S and nine of which are in the 4Ds. That might explain why silver filling row 5 is in the fifth row, but since the 4Ds fill after, this is the 4D block, and it might also explain why silver is in the ninth column of the D block. So quite a lot going on. Let's do one more, and then I think we'll have something to work with. Okay, we'll use my favorite element, tungsten. It has 74 electrons, so this one's a biggie. And noticing where it is in the periodic table, it's right here. So I'm going to predict that because it's in row 6, and it's in this block, this block that contains silver, that it's going to end something D. And I'm going to guess because it's in the fourth row, column that it's going to end something d4 so let's see if we can get there this one's a long one and we'll also do the noble gas notation so here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen this stops being intuitive after 3p so now we're going to go to 4s 1920 after 4s 3d 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, after 3D, 4P, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, after 4P, 5S, 37, 38, after 5S, 4D, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, after 4D, 5P, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. After 5P, 6S, 55, 56. After 6S, 4F, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. After 4F, 5D, 71, 72, 73, 74. So our electron configuration if we write it out in long form, is going to be, and take a deep breath, because this is going to be a long one, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 2, 4D, 10, 5P, 6, 6, S2, 4F, 14, 5D, 4. It looks like that prediction held out pretty well, 5D, 4. And if you don't want to write all of that out because it takes too long, then feel free to use noble gas notation because the noble gas closest to tungsten without going over is xenon. You'll see that here because xenon ends 5p6, and everything that's over the top of that is unique to tungsten. Xenon, 6s2, 4f14, 5d4. Whew. I'm going to go drink some Gatorade.